let's talk about this um, footballer, soccer player, Ashraf Hakimi's wife oh, yeah. tries to claim half of his fortune in a divorce settlement. They're going through a divorce. And next thing you know, she was informed by the court that her millionaire husband owns nothing. Is all his properties is registered under his mother's name. Uh, Hakimi receives $1 million from PSG Monthly to the soccer team. However, 80% of this amount is deposited into his mother, Mrs. Fat- Fatima's account. He has no property, cars, houses, jewelry, or even clothes in his name. Anytime he wants anything, he b- asks his mother, who then buys it from him. The Jack moved this Jack moved this century. <laughs> okay. Check okay. Um, Erica, what, what's your uh, thoughts? What's your thoughts about this? Okay, now let's let's give it some context. He's 24, she's 38. He was 22 when he met her. Ooh. She was 36. It, uh, this is the year of COVID. In the year of COVID, they got two kids, like back to back, like Mexican twins. <laughs> back bang. <laughs> Next thing you know, things are going right. So there's some allegations that he uh, is accused of rape. Mm-hmm. Probably a reason why she filed for a divorce. Yep. Mm-hmm. What's your thoughts, Erica? Look, she should have protected herself. I mean, and I, I didn't know about the age gap. That's a considerable age gap, right? And he's an athlete. He's a professional athlete. Uh, Were you surrounded by yes. distractions? Yes. Yeah, so ladies, protect yourself. Protect your assets. When you want a prenup, like you have to disclose your assets, right? And so if she would have gone for a prenup, she would have known that this was the situation because you have to disclose that, right? So um, she didn't do that. And now, I mean, so I'm wondering, will she then have to pay him? Because according to, right? I mean, I have a friend who has to give part of her pension to her ex-husband because wow. she makes more than, and that that just breaks my heart because, I mean, we work really hard for our measly oh, pension. Course, it's not a lot, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And like, she's, yeah, so... Oof, protect yourself. There's so much you can do with prenups. Um, you so, know, so you can add certain provisions and payoffs, like for children, if you have children, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not an attorney, but, yeah, like, yeah. that's what, I, from what I know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you, go, you go into the marriage with the best of intentions, of right? Of course. And then, and then things sour, don't, things don't go yeah. your way. Yeah. Um, you know, when, when I'm looking at this situation, because as a guy that's been married uh, and divorced, um, you know, you know I, I got a few thoughts here. I'm, I'm, I'm just rattle them off. Number one, listen, men, ladies, think twice about getting married, especially, bro, if you're 22 years old, that like you're doing getting married. Mm-hmm. And so, mm-hmm. you know, you don't want to do anything about it at all. Great. If you don't want to do something about uh, a prenup conversations, great. But this is the consequences. I mean, how does one mar- how, how does one get married? A man provides, creates. And here's the thing. This is the reason why, to Erica, why a lot of men don't want to get married. Because mm-hmm. he works his whole entire life. Sure. He's been playing f- soccer for his entire life. Next time he marries the wrong person and she's, right? So I bet you some guy in the locker room said, hey, bro, put things toward, towards your uh, mm-hmm. your mom's name. And that's conversation. It's right. legal conversation discussions mm-hmm. in the locker room. Mm-hmm. Um, the second one is, you talked about earlier, prenups. And mm-hmm. early communication about money needs to be established. He was only 22, getting married. Again, is the brain fully developed? At least in business, you'd start something, but also you have the opportunity to look at exiting it. You know, if you if you're looking at the worst case situation here, mm-hmm. which the woman would probably say, well, why do we get to get a prenup? Mm-hmm. Are you expecting for us to break up? Mm-hmm. Here's the thing: I just want to know that if we're going to break up, that prenup agreement makes you think twice. If you really want to do this? Let's let's remove money from the conversation as a variable of making a bad decision or a good decision, mm-hmm. but just remove money from the table. Do we really mm-hmm. do we really love each other? Mm-hmm. Number three: What's some of the non-negotiables? You know, like, for example, if he's a soccer player. Hey, babe, listen, you know, um, you get DMs from ladies, I want to know about it. Right? You know, just to protect, what do you call that, uh, create uh, boundaries. Mm-hmm. Um, number four, what's your definition of marriage? You know, I believe the definition of marriage is not a legal definition. I believe my definition of marriage is a, between us and God. It's a, it's a, it's a covenant agreement with, with God. Mm-hmm. And it re- requires two things. Number one is companionship. Is, the Bible says in Genesis 2, it's not good for man to be alone. Therefore, he created him a helpmate. Number two is also the procreation. Kids are a blessing from God from two parents to stay together. And uh, you talk about protecting yourself. Last point I want to make here is, listen, rape allegations are serious. Yeah. Erica, I had, I had a friend uh, of uh, Patrick, but David, I see you have his book here. Uh, and, and yeah. Awesome. <laughs> and uh, Patrick's buddy would say, okay, uh, his buddy, if you go out with girls and they're about to do their thing yeah. and they're single, I said, listen, uh, let's do a quick video. Hey, um, state your name. 
State your name. Yep. I am ready to get get busy with him. I am not under duress. Da, 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 da. And Smart. he would actually ah. create a video vlog wow. as evidence down the road if. Wow. Do you know what happens? Talk about protecting yourself. That's how men can yeah. protect themselves. <laughs> I mean, I get it. I get it. Yeah. I get it. I mean, I really have to, like, I, I honestly did not know about the age gap. I don't think she was thinking. I mean, I personally would not. And she was an actress. She can do well on her own. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the thing, right? Yeah. That I wanted to throw that in there. Thank you. I forgot. I was going to make that point that she isn't like she has her own money too yeah right but i mean i i mean i'm 39 years old i would not marry a 22 year old i would not it would be an automatic yeah it's a no for me a little older 26 27 eight ish maybe (laughs) i'll consider it but like i mean really 22 though like would you would you date a guy and marry a guy to have his kid or two two baby mamas one baby mama I, I don't think so. I would not. No, I don't. You I wouldn't win want. you over. I mean, maybe you know, never say never. But it, I don't. Uh, I don't think it would make you pause. Yeah, for sure. Got it. Yeah, for sure. What about mm-hmm. you, Milton? Would you date a girl with uh, with a kid? You, you don't have any kids yourself. Zero kids. Though. You have zero yeah, kids. Milton. Completely zero kids. You have zero mm-hmm. kids. Absolutely. Uh, Milton is negative disclosing zero. that for some Ab- reason. Absolutely negative zero, kids. zero kids. Negative kids, actually. Negative, negative, negative yes. kids. Yes. It went back inside. Completely inside, yes. <laughs> oh, Milton, stay inside. 2023, he's basically telling us he can get pregnant in 2023. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I think r- r- right now where I'm at with my life, um, obviously, I, I, I like the idea of being able to meet someone and be able to build a family with them and start fresh with them and get the experience of... Shit, the baby's up at 3 a.m. We're both stressed, and now we're both like, sleep. right? I know it mm-hmm. kind of sounds like a crazy uh, idea of wanting to experience that with someone, on, you know, fresh, fresh. Both of you guys going going into it, because then you know you you, you end up with someone, especially, especially if you don't have kids. I think if I had kids, it'd be a different story, of course. But yeah. if I don't, if if I don't have kids and she has kids, it's one of those things where we're completely missing the experience of, babe, what do we do? And she falls into the category of, well, th- relax. This is what exactly what we're gonna do. And I feel like it takes the experience away from from being able to start a family with someone. But the older I get, the more I guess you could say imposition that I get for myself. Um, I think that door is starting to slowly creep open, and I'm starting to peek inside and observe and look around mm. to see if it's something that I entertain. At least right now, where I'm at with my personal life. Because I think the older, for example, Erica, the, the more mature you get, mm-hmm. yeah. you, know, you got to expect that whoever you're going to date also is probably older, mm-hmm. and they might have some children. Children and yeah. life experiences too, as well. Mm-hmm. Or they could be, you know, their late thirties, early forties, have no kids, be single, and they kind of have to question their sanity if they're you know, hint, same hint, women. Hint. Yeah. Anybody here in the studio that you're it's, referencing this to? I don't know, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, there's a reason why you know some people stay single for a long period of time. It's either them or it's, uh, you know. Erica, I mean, do you want to have kids? Um, I can tell you that I never had like a strong desire, you know, how someone, Mm -hmm. some women, I mean, I have friends that are like, oh my God, I can't wait to be a mom. You know, I didn't really have that. I didn't Mm -hmm. really have like that really strong desire to be a mom. Um, And maybe it's because, you know, like I've worked in education for many years now and, Mm -hmm. you know, I've got the kiddos, my, I have a niece, my niece is 23 and then I have uh, my three nephews, you know, from my typical Latino family. You got, Yeah. yeah, there you go. Um, so, you know, I, I saw the struggles. Kids are expensive. There's a lot you've got to deal yeah. with, you know. Um, you have to have it together yourself and help them get it together. You know, it's just, it's a lot, yeah. you know. And so, I don't know, I just never really felt like it was something that I absolutely needed to do. And I don't feel like it uh, defines me or makes me any less of a woman just no, because I don't so have does it change? Do you think it'll change your perspective as a teacher, as an educator, mm-hmm. if you have your own kids and your kids are in the same system that you're teaching in? Mm, good question. Um, I want to say this about that. I work with some of the most amazing, brilliant educators, and I'm not just saying that. Um, I've had the luxury of I'm uh, just this school and the last school that I worked at, I worked with such amazing people, like incredible, just like super intelligent, um, caring, kind, you know, and I would, I would want my kids Mm -hmm. to be taught by these people, you know, like I would want them, I I trust them. Um, They have the best intentions. It's just, you know, again, like the, the curriculum, the, you know, that I I don't give you pause. 
Yeah. Necessarily. Imagine yeah. if you can build a system with the same people, but put them in a private, or what they call that in Chicago, they call it a charter. Oh, like the charter? Yeah. Mm. Maybe not so much. Ah, huh? uh, yeah. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not too much into the charter thing. It's just, what, I mean. What's the, uh, what's the knock, uh, I, I don't know, from the outsider looking in, from yeah. an educator's perspective, public school system or charter school? What's what's the uh, pros and cons? Well, charter schools are sort of gearing more towards, like, the privatizing and the funding is different. Um, from what I know, the pay is different. Um, and just, uh, I, and don't quote me on this because I've never worked for charter, but I remember reading that, um, like, you didn't have to have a teaching degree to be a, a teacher at a charter oh, interesting. school. They could, you know, recruit people. For, and it's, I mean, I don't know, it's just kind of, I almost want to say, I don't know if it's the right word, but kind of devalues what we, you know, a lot of us, we're national board certified. We've got our yeah. master's degree. Yeah. You know, we've worked hard to earn this. Like, it takes us years to earn tenure. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm tenured and, like, it it takes you four to five years to earn it, and you really have to earn it, you know. And help me understand, what's the benefit of being tenured? Um, You kind of get, it's like, um, it's kind of like a hierarchy, right? So, like, you have, when you have tenure, it's a little bit, more difficult to get rid of you if you know I got it. like um, right at the top of the pecking yeah, yeah the there's a the there's a yeah there's a pecking order so so if you like that clip please watch this one right here if you want to see the full podcast click right here